Hi, I have permission from Feeding Minds Press to read and record a very good project with you today out loud. So, a very good project by Rick Henningfield. And there's a few book vocabulary words in here. Um, threshold, which is a noun, an amount that must be exceeded to create a reaction. Pesticide is a noun, a substance used for destroying targeted insects. Biodegrade, a verb, to decompose or break down. Integrated pest management, a noun, a method for managing pests on agricultural crops that is a combination of approaches including chemical, physical, and biological solutions. And the highlighted careers in this book are a strawberry farmer, which is a person who cares for the daily needs of strawberries, and a county extension agent, who is a person that provides formal and non-formal educational learning activities to people in the county with an emphasis on taking knowledge gained through research and then sharing it with its residents. Chapter one, today is the day. I've been waiting for this day all year. I just need to get through math and then a spelling test. After that, our science teacher, Mr. Brian, who we call Mr. B, is going to kick off our fourth grade class project. Oh, by the way, I'm Rowan. You see, every year the fourth grade class at my school is in charge of the school strawberry patch. It is almost as big as a soccer field right next to it. Yeah, that's a lot of strawberries. Mr. B says if we were to measure the field, it would be equal to one acre, and that farmers generally measure land in acres. The reason I'm so excited for this class project is because my two brothers, Jack and Kane, guaranteed me that I would get to eat all the strawberries I could ever want at the end of the project. And I, L-O-V-E, love strawberries. Each year, the project is a little different. Jack's class got to sell strawberry shortcakes at a high school basketball game and raised enough money to put a wheelchair elevator in our auditorium. My friend Seth is in a wheelchair and he uses the elevator to get on stage every year for our concerts and plays. With the elevator, he doesn't have to go all the way around to the back of the theater to use the ramp. That's pretty cool. Kane's class turned the field into a U-pick patch one weekend. They call it U-pick, I guess, because people got to pick their own strawberries for a fee. I liked it because I got my own basket and picked until it was piled high with strawberries. Then I took them home, washed them, and ate fresh strawberries until I thought I would burst. The next week, <clears throat> his class went back out to the field and picked everything left to donate to the food pantry along with the money they raised. This year, it's our turn with a field. I have no idea what Mr. B is thinking, but as long as I get to eat fresh strawberries at the end, I'm all in. And then down here, we have a little picture of an insect. And that insect is an aphid. Bet we learn more about those coming up. Chapter two, special guests. Math and spelling are taking forever. Finally, Mr. B asks, who is ready to learn about the fourth grade class project? The class shouts, we are. Mr. B pulls out a basket full of strawberries and a gallon of vanilla ice cream from a cooler behind his desk. I'm not sure if people are more excited about the project or the food, but half the class jumps out of their seats for the strawberries and ice cream. All right, folks, grab a seat, grab a seat, Mr. B says. Once everyone settles down, Mr. B continues. To help introduce our project, we have two guests this morning. Two people come up front from ba the back of the room. I did not even notice them with all the excitement. Mr. B says, please welcome Mr. Bauer and Mrs. Renee to our class. Mr. Bauer is a strawberry farmer and Miss Renee is a county extension agent. Before I really think about it, I blurt out, what's an extension agent? Miss Renee chimes in, I'm an extension agent, specifically a horticulture extension agent. My job is to help farmers like Mr. Bauer and people who live in this county when they have questions about raising strawberries or other field crops. Mr. Bauer adds, I usually don't have too many questions, but when something goes wrong in my field, I can ask Miss Renee to help me figure out the problem and then help me find the best plan to fix it. 
So Miss Renee is a teacher, my friend Seth asked. Kind of, said Mr. B. He continues, Miss Renee actually works for our state university and is what it's called a county extension agent for horticulture. Horticulture is a new word for us and it means the practice of growing and managing plants. Anyone from farmers to backyard gardeners and even curious elementary school students can ask Miss Renee questions about the best way to grow plants. She's really smart and knows a lot about plants and any problems they may have. I had never thought people would have questions about growing plants. It seemed like plants are everywhere and they seem to grow just fine. My friend Seth raises his hand and without waiting to be called on, says in a funny voice, so you could tell me why the tomato plants my mom and I plant every year in our garden never actually produces any tomatoes? Everyone chuckles a little bit at Seth's question because of how he said, never. Renee, Miss Renee answers, yep, that's the ex exactly the kind of question I would help answer, Seth. But for now, I am here to help with your project. Sophia quickly adds, what is our project this year? Sophia always asks questions really fast when she gets excited. Mr. B says, Miss Renee and Mr. Bauer, would you mind telling the students what the project is this year? Chapter three, the project. Mr. Bauer says, as you might imagine, your class is going to become the farmers for the strawberry field this year. This means you get to make a lot of decisions about growing the plants. The goal is to grow a lot of strawberries and the decisions you make will affect how many you get. But don't worry, Miss Renee and I are here to help. Miss Renee continues, when it is time to harvest, your class will be hosting a strawberry Sunday fundraiser. The class started cheering at the thought of strawberry sundaes. Mr. B, who no one noticed working in the back of the class says, well, knowing you all like strawberry sundaes, why don't you come grab one and then head back to your seat? Everyone jumped up out of their desks and ran to the table at the back of the room. I tell Seth, this is awesome. As we wait for our sundae, Seth agrees that strawberries on ice cream is the best. When everyone makes it back to their seats, Mr. Bauer says, the success of your fundraiser will be affected by how well your class can raise the strawberries. Miss Renee continues, your class will have to make a lot of decisions about how to manage the strawberry patch. Let's get right to it. This afternoon, your class will take a field trip to your strawberry field. Seth and I look at each other and laugh because we are taking a field trip to a field. <laughs> I think to myself, this is the best day of school ever, a field trip and strawberry sundaes. Mr. B jumps back in and says, all right, class, it is time to head to music, then lunch. After lunch, we will get ready for a field trip. We will see Mr. Bauer and Miss Renee this afternoon, but let's thank them for coming in to introduce our project. Thank you, the class yell says enthusi enthusiastically, and we head out the door. And then here is a picture of a little weevil. Chapter four, a field trip that is literally a trip to a field. At lunch, all we talk about is the field trip this afternoon. Right after lunch, we have recess. As I walk out of the door for recess with Seth, he says, check it out, and points toward the strawberry field. Those tents must be for our field trip. I run off the blacktop and through the grass out to the crowd of kids by the strawberry field. Whoa, I say aloud as I see a big drone sitting on one of the tables. I yell, Seth, check that out. I turn to look for Seth, but he is not with me. I look back and see Seth still on the blacktop. So I run back to tell him, Seth, there's a huge drone on one of those tables. Seth responds, I wonder what that has to do with strawberries. Then the bell rings and we all head into school. Mr. B is at the door telling our class to stay outside because we are going to head right to our field trip. When the other classes are inside, Mr. B says, okay, let's start our trip to the field. You mean field trip, I say. Either way is correct, says Mr. B. We walk out to the edge of the blacktop and then the class starts through the grass. Seth hesitates and says, oh boy, this is going to be a bumpy ride as he pushes his wheelchair to the tents. 
Mr. Bauer and Miss Renee are at the edge of the strawberry field. Miss Renee says, welcome to your field day. In agriculture, we have field days where people are invited into a field to learn about technology and practices being used in producing a specific crop like strawberries. Mr. Bauer continues, one of the coolest parts of a field day is the demonstrations. Then Mr. B says, in a moment, I'll assign you to one of two groups. What you'll learn with your group will be applied throughout this project, so pay close attention. When Mr. B starts counting us off, Seth and I are sneaking, quickly make sure Zach is standing between us so we will be in the same group. Once Mr. B counts us off, he sends our group to a tent to start. And then on this page, there's a drawing, an illustration of a thrips. Chapter five, scouting, but not for athletes. Has anyone ever heard of scouting? Miss Renee asks when our group arrives at the tent. Sophia says, I have. It's when someone in high school is super good at a sport and a college sends important people to watch them. Miss Renee chuckles and says, I suppose you're right. But for this project, you won't be scouting athletes. You'll be scouting strawberries. Miss Renee seems really excited about this, but I guess from the confused looks on her faces, she knows we don't get it. Miss Renee continues, just like scout watching, an, just like a scout watching an athlete, we are going to be watching our strawberry plants, making observations and recording them. I have a chart with pictures of many insects that you'll find that will help us. So let's give it a try. Write down anything you see that looks different. We each grab a clipboard off the table and walk over to the edge of the field. So here's what their clipboard looks like. Miss Renee bends down and points to a group of small green plants. These are your strawberry transplants, she says. They're just starting to grow after being planted. What do you notice about them? I say, they're really green. Aiden says, it looks like some of the plants are attached to each other by a vine looking thing above the ground. Great observation, says Miss Renee. Those are called stolons or runners. That's one of the ways strawberries produce more plants. What else do you notice? Seth says, when you look across the field, the plants look like they're in rows. Another good observation. This is what we would expect to see in a field that is planted correctly. Straight rows let the drive farmers drive tractors through the field without running over plants, said Miss Renee. Now you should have each have a magnifying glass. Let's use it to really look closely at the plants. We are investigating the leaves now. Look for clues or signs of any insects that might be on the plants, like an actual insect, an eaten leaf, or insect eggs on a leaf. Insect eggs are the size of a grain of sand, but they are round with no sharp edges. Be sure to look at both the top and bottom of the leaves, and remember to look at the picture on your chart. Each person needs to look at 10 different plants and fill in the chart. Miss Renee says, if you find an insect or anything that seems strange, call me and we will identify what it is. Now, as someone mentioned before, the strawberries are planted in rows, so be careful not to hurt our little plants and walk between the rows. Spread up and start scouting. Chapter six, friendly insects. My classmates spread throughout the field and began making observations. Scott calls out, I found an eaten leaf. Miss Renee goes over, takes a look, and says it was probably just torn or broken when planted and will heal in time. Then Isabella shouts, I think I found some eggs, but they are very small and might be sand. Miss Renee looks and says, you're right, those are eggs. We should keep looking at our plants to see if we can find more eggs or other signs of insects. I am looking at my 10th plant without finding anything. Then I spot an insect on the underside of a leaf. I holler, Miss Renee, I found an insect. Do you know what it is? Miss Renee comes over to look at the insect with me. She calls the class over and says, look at this insect. She asks, is this a problem? A bunch of us start nodding our heads and agreeing that insects on plants are bad news. Miss Renee speaks up, actually, we are in luck because these are good insects. They don't hurt the strawberry plants at all 
and they are a natural enemy to bad insects. That's right, Miss Renee, says Mr. Bauer, who comes over to take a look at our insect. Think of it this way. In science class, you learned about predators and prey in an ecosystem, right? In the ecosystem of our strawberry field, this beneficial insect called the minute pirate bug is the predator of prey on insects that damage a strawberry plant, like thrips. What's a thrips, I ask? Miss Renee answers, it's a small insect that loves to eat the flower of a strawberry plant. They can do major damage. Lucky for us, we didn't see any thrips today, which is good. We all go back to one of the tents. This time, it is a tent with a big drone on a table. I'm really curious why there is a drone and if I can fly it. Chapter seven, a flight. Mr. Bauer says, your class is going to be responsible for scouting the field and making sure everything is growing correctly. If you observe something unusual, Miss Renee and I can come back into the field to help solve the problem. Mr. Bauer continues, there are a lot of observations we need to make, and sometimes we have help. See those field sensors? He points at what looked like a pipe sticking out of the field with a box hooked on top of it. These smart sensors send information to my phone telling when the strawberries might need water or fertilizer, he continues. The sensors are so smart that they can even automatically turn on the irrigation system. That's what waters the plants, when moisture gets too low in the soil. We are really lucky that it is taken care of for us and guarantees we do not waste water. Seth asks, can I get that for my garden? My mom always makes me do the watering with a hose. It would be way more fun if I could just use a phone to do it. Mr. Bauer says, probably. However, this was a big purchase. For me, it was worth it because I can't water all of my fields with my hose. And if my strawberries don't grow, my family won't make any money. I think the hose might still be a good option for a small garden, but Miss Renee can teach you when and how much to water so that you know when you can skip it. Mr. Bauer pauses. I just can't wait anymore. What is a drone for, I blurt out. Great question, Rowan, Miss Renee says. This is one of the new technologies my office is using and we'll get to use it too. Cool, what are we going to use it for? I ask just as Seth blurts out, can I fly it? Well, not yet, Seth, says Miss Renee. We are going to use this over the next three months to help with our scouting. Like what we just did in the field? How can it do that, I thought. Miss Renee continues, the camera on this drone is really powerful and can take excellent pictures of plants. It's so good that we would even be able to see damage caused by insects on the plants. That's cool, says Mr. B. And even cooler, says Miss Renee, is the drone can add a GPS marker to locate where the picture was taken in the field. Kind of like dropping a pin on a map online. So we know exactly where the plant is if the drone finds anything, we can use a handheld GPS or go straight to that spot to look at it. Would you like to see a demonstration? Asks Miss Renee. We all shout, yes! Miss Renee starts up the drone and sends it flying over the field. The drone goes up and down at different points in the field. Here's a picture of the drone in the field. Mr. B says, class, take a look at Miss Renee's laptop. It is showing pictures from the camera on the drone. Mr. Bauer says, see the map of the field on the screen? Every place a picture is taken, a GPS coordinate is also recorded. Then it drops a pin with the picture attached to it. The hum of the drone gets louder as it flies back to the tent. Miss Renee says, as the drone lands, now I have all the data I need to scout the field from my computer. With this technology, I can scout huge fields to help farmers identify problems without having to drive or walk all over. Just then the school bell rings and Mr. B jumps, says quickly, whoa, I lost track of time. Class, we need to thank Mr. Bauer and Miss Renee and head back to wrap up the day. Thank you, says the class. Mr. Bauer responds, we will see you next week to check in on the project. Chapter eight, Berry Watch. The next week, Mr. Bauer and Miss Renee are back in our classroom. 
Mr. Bauer shows us a graph on his phone that has a green line showing the moisture level in the field. Seth asks, with all the rain, has the irrigation system needed to turn on much? Mr. Bauer responds, no, Seth, as long as this line is green, the irrigation system will not turn on. I'd imagine you have not had to water your garden too much either. If the line turns red at any point, that would mean our sensors are recording, the moisture is too low, and the irrigation system would turn on. Miss Renee pulls out her laptop and says, today is an important day for scouting. The strawberries are flowering, and this when, is when insects can become a problem in the flower. I brought my drone again to help us, and this time I have programmed it to take pictures throughout the field in an organized way. In fact, it's going to take pictures in 190 locations. All of the pictures will be sent to my computer, and if we see anything strange, we will go out and have a look. Seth raises his hand and asks excitedly, can I fly the drone this time? Miss Renee responds, well, no one will really be flying the drone because it's programmed for where it's going to go. But how about this? You can push the button to start it and hold the remote while it all takes pictures. Awesome, says Seth. Okay, let's head outside and start our scouting, Miss Renee says as she heads out the door. When we got to the edge of the blacktop, Seth hesitates. He doesn't want to take another bumpy ride and some of the areas are muddy from all the rain. Miss Renee says, Seth, you don't have to go any closer if you don't want to. Seth smiles at Miss Renee and says, okay, I'll stay here. Miss Renee sets the drone on the blacktop, hands Seth the remote and says, okay, push the power button here, then the program button here. Seth hits the buttons and the drone flies out to the strawberry field. A bunch of my classmates run out to the edge of the field to get a closer look at the drone. The drone works over the field like a hummingbird dipping up and down as it flies in a straight line from one end of the field to the other. It looks like the drone is drawing graph paper over the field as it flies. Chapter nine, using clues called data to identify the problem. The drone comes back to the blacktop and all the students come back from the field to join Seth and the drone. Then everyone heads back to the classroom. Miss Renee says, let's go do some virtual scouting. Mr. B tells us to grab a laptop on the way to our desks and log into the website written on the board. After everyone has a site up, Miss Renee says, the pictures are now all loaded. Go ahead and open the fourth grade field link and you should see a map of our field with 19 pins on it. When I open the link, I see a satellite map of the actual field. I see part of the school and the playground. The strawberry field has 19 red dots across it, each labeled with a number. Miss Renee continues, each person will get a number of the location you will scout. When you click on the red dot, a folder will open with 10 pictures. These are the pictures the drone took in your location earlier, in your location earlier today. You need to look closely at each picture. Zoom in to see if you notice any insects or strange looking things in the picture. When you find something, let Mr. Bauer or me know and we will help identify what it is. Looking around the room, I noticed that most people are already looking at their pictures, so I started to look too. When I opened the first picture and zoomed in, I am amazed at how detailed the images are. I don't see anything unusual in any of my pictures. Isabella says loudly, Miss Renee, I think I found something. Everyone swarms around her computer screen. Miss Renee walks over and says, oh my, yep, you did. Click on the flag for that picture and type minute pirate bug in the box underneath it. Seth says in a pirate kind of voice, "Are a minute pirate bug. Didn't we see one of those last week? Miss Renee goes to the front of the room and projects, projects an image on the whiteboard. Remember seeing this, the minute pirate bug, Miss Renee says. Then Sophia shouts out, but those are good insects. Miss Renee continues, you're right, Sophia. But remember how we talked about these being a predatory insect to thrips? A number of farmers have been reporting high population of thrips recently, and that's why I wanted to visit with you all today. I thought maybe thrips would be in your patch too. Ethan asks, are these insects a problem now? 
the ones we when we saw when we scouted last time were good insects mr bauer answers yes the minute pirate bug is a good insect but why they are in your field might indicate another problem minute pirate bugs eat thrips and when we see them we also need to look for thrips thrips are what we call a pest in the strawberry field Miss Renee changes the picture on the whiteboard so we can see what thrips look like. Seth says loudly, my little brother can be a pest sometimes. Everyone laughs. So here is a picture of thrips. Mr. Bauer continues, I would imagine when your brother is being a pest, you don't want him around. Thrips, like the one Miss Renee is showing, are not always a pest to strawberries, but right now when the strawberries are in blossom or have flowers open, they can be a major pest. The pest you are seeing is specifically called a flower thrips, and it will eat the inside parts of the flower. That flower will die off and not produce a strawberry. Every flower that gets infested with thrips means one less strawberry the field will produce. Lucky for us, we have minute pirate bugs to eat them, right? Sophia says, and Miss Renee agrees. Miss Renee continues, as long as we have a high population of minute pirate bugs, they will eat the thrips and we won't have a problem. Keep an eye out for more minute pirate bugs. We continue looking at our photos. A lot of us find minute pirate bugs, which seems to make Miss Renee and Mr. Bauer really happy. Then James says, why aren't these leaves green? They look brownish yellow. Mr. Brower looks at the picture and says, oh no, that looks like spider mite damage. Spider mites feed on the leaves, which hurts the plants and can reduce the number of strawberries we can grow. That doesn't sound good at all. The whole class wants a big harvest, bigger than last year. We don't want the thrips or spider mites to hurt our plants. Mr. B says, so it seems like the thrips are under control because the minute pirate bug is eating them. How much damage could the spider mite do? Miss Renee answers, we'll have a better idea when we are done scouting. She Continue, she continues, everyone analyze the rest of your pictures closely. Click the flag and make note on any that seem to have bronze colored leaves. Miss Renee changes the picture on the board to show bronze leaves caused by spider mite damage. She seems to have pictures of everything we will find. Seth asks, why don't I see any spider mites on the bronze leaves in this picture? Mr. Brower responds, spider mites hide under the leaves and are too small to the camera to see. This is why we still go to the field after we look at the pictures. We all go back to work determined to find a picture of a spider mite damage. I think to myself, wow, plants need a lot of attention. There are a lot of things out there that are trying to hurt them. Chapter 10, Decision Time. When everyone is done analyzing their pictures, Miss Renee refreshes the map on her computer and projects it for the class to see. Five of the red dots have turned black with red exclamation points in them. Miss Renee says, who wants to go on a field trip? Everyone raises their hands. We need to go into the strawberry field and do some in-person scouting. It looks like only the small portion of the field is showing signs of spider mite damage, but there may be more out there the camera didn't see. We all head out of the school with our notebooks and a magnifying glass. Miss Renee walks, out, walks us out to the field this time, Mr. Bauer stays in the classroom with Seth. They're going to look up information on how to manage spider mite damage in a strawberry field. Miss Renee tells us to scout the area we scouted last time. She says, we will scout the areas where the drone saw spider mite damage. Miss Renee reminds us, be sure to look closely under the leaves. That's where these mites like to hang out. I think Seth would say, I like to hang out in the gym if he were here. I wish it were easier for him to come into the field with us. After the scouting, we go back into the classroom. Only Miss Renee found spider mites. She says, this is a good sign. I think we found the spider mites before their populations grew and they damaged the entire strawberry field. Now we have to decide what to do to manage the spider mites. Mr. Bauer projects a graph on the whiteboard and asks us to copy it down. Mr. Bauer says, this is a critical point in any farming operation and he points to the place where all three lines cross. This is where a farmer will lose the crop and ultimately not make any money from that field. The good news is we are not here yet. 
We are getting close based on all of your scouting data. The spider mite population is in this area, which is called a threshold. He pointed to a spot just left of where the line crossed. Meaning we need to make a decision quickly about how we manage the spider mite or there won't be any strawberries to harvest. Sophia says quietly, no strawberries would mean no strawberry Sunday fundraiser. Mr. B sees that we are upset with this news. Mr. B asks, what can we do? Then Seth chimes in, while you were all out in the field, Mr. Bauer and I looked up some pest management options for spider mite on the website of Ms. Renee's office, the county extension office. Ms. Renee smiles and says, that is another huge part of my job to provide information to farmers on what to do once they identify a pest. Seth continues, Mr. Bauer figured we would need to do something to save our crop because we are approaching a major threshold of the spider mite population. Seth pauses to see if anyone notices that he used the word threshold correctly in a sentence. Mr. B says, nice use of the new vocabulary, Seth. For the rest of us, a threshold is an amount of something that will cause a reaction. In this case, we are talking about the number of spider mites in the field approaching a level or threshold that will begin to kill all the strawberry plants. Did I get that right, Seth? Seth smiles and nods. Seth continues, we have two options to save our strawberries, a biological control and a chemical control. Seth changes the screen on the whiteboard to show the control options and continues, for the biological control, we would release beneficial insects, actually another kind of mite into the field, and they would eat the spider mites, like what the minute pirate bug is doing to the thrips naturally. For a chemical control, we would apply a spray that targets spider mites. A few of the kids' hands go up after Seth stops talking. Mr. B calls on Emma. Mr. B, I don't want any chemicals on my food. A bunch more hands go up. Miss Renee steps in and says, these are not easy decisions. Let's look at everything we know so that we can make the best choice. First, the problem is that we need to do something fast to reduce the spider mite population in our field. A sprayed pesticide application or chemical spray that targets and kills the unwanted pests is really fast and effective in reducing the spider mite population. The chemical we would use is tested and approved by the government to use on strawberries to reduce spider mite populations. When applied correctly, following the directions given on the label, all of the spray would biodegrade and go away before any strawberries are picked. So none of the spray would be on the strawberries you would eat. To avoid the spider mite coming back, and the need to spray again, I think we can actually use a biological control too. The biological control is another type of mite that prey on and eat the spider mites. Now we could just release the other mites, but it takes them a while to eat the spider mites. And by the time they reduce the spider mite population, we may lose our entire strawberry crop. We have to think about what would work the best to save the strawberries. Mr. Bauer adds, my family will eat these strawberries too, and we are going to feed them to the entire community. That is a lot of responsibility on the people who grow food and may have to make decisions like this. I look at Ms. Renee's recommendations similar to a doctor giving a prescription. They are both experts, and as long as we follow the instructions they give, like when I give ki my kids medicine, we can ensure everything will be safe and healthy. Emma says, so we can do both? And everyone slowly puts their hand down. Yes, said Miss Renee. I think it's our best option. She continues, it's what we call integrated pest management or IPM and is really common in the strawberry industry. IPM is using multiple methods to control pests. I'd recommend we ask Mr. Bauer, who is trained and certified to apply sprays to crops, to spray an insect control for spider mites one time. Then we add the biological control of beneficial mites to keep the field uh, populations down. We must all look a bit confused, so Miss Renee continues, I will create a one-page explanation of the problem we are having in the strawberry field uh, for each of you to take home tonight. It will explain the options of the chemical control, the biological control, and blending the two controls into an integrated pest management plan. I will also include what each option will cost. Please talk it over with your family and friends and come ready to vote tomorrow morning on what to do. And at the bottom of this page, there is a minute pirate bug. If you can see that down here.
Chapter 11, An IPM Experiment, Release the Bugs. This morning, the class is buzzing with all the thoughts and stories of the conversations people had at home. Mr. B says, we need to vote on our plan with the strawberry field. The three options are biological only, chemical spray only, and IPM plan using both the spray and the mites. Mr. B calls out each choice and we raise our hands. It is obvious, the IPM plan of both a chemical spray followed by beneficial mites wins. Mr. B says, I will call Ms. Renee and Mr. Bauer and let them know so that they can get to work. Mr. Bauer applies the insect control spray early Saturday morning. It is really calm in the morning with no wind, the ideal weather for applying the spray. Two weeks later, small strawberries are starting to appear all over the field. Ms. Renee returns to class with a bottle that has pictures of mites on the outside of it. Ms. Renee tells us, here are the mites, but before we release them, we need to scout the field one more time looking for signs of spider mites. Yes, that means a trip to the field, I say, then look over at Seth. He wasn't as excited. I wish the ride to the strawberry field wasn't so bumpy for him and muddy for his wheelchair. As we walk outside with our magnifying glasses, Miss Renee says, Seth, you get to run the drone today. Seth's eyes light up. Miss Renee continues, I've programmed the drone to take pictures of about half the field and we will do the other half. Power it up and hit the start program button. As the pictures come in, you can look at them right away. Miss Renee, Miss Renee hands the remote to Seth and starts walking to the field with the rest of us. The buzz of a drone zooms over our head. Miss Renee says, let's see if we can scout faster than the drone, but be careful not to step on the plants or little strawberries. We don't find any spider mites or bronze leaves in the field, but Miss Renee says that even if we don't see them, it doesn't mean they aren't there. It just means the spray reduced the population. The second half of our IPM plan is to add the mites that eat spider mites to the field. We can do that now. Miss Renee releases the mites and says, we will be able to harvest our strawberries in about four weeks. And here at the top of this page is an illustration of a mite. Chapter 12, The Fruits of Our Labor. I know I started by saying I'd been waiting for this day all year when we were going to learn about our class project. And that was a pretty exciting day, but I did not realize it would take four months to grow strawberries. So th really, this is the day I am really excited about. Today is our Harvest and Strawberry Sunday sale. Mr. Bauer brings 20 people to our class and we walk to the field. Seth stays on the blacktop and says he would watch from there. I can tell he's a little sad, but I promise him I will bring him some fresh strawberries to eat. Mr. Bauer introduces us to the group of people and says, these people are here to help you pick your perfectly ripened strawberries. It is a good thing we got the spider mites under control or this day wouldn't have happened. My harvest crew is going to help pick. They will start on that end of the field and you can all start on that end. We all grab baskets and off we go. Here's the illustration of the strawberry sundae. Yum. I'm getting hungry. Anybody else getting hungry for some strawberries and some ice cream? On the way to the field, I asked Mr. Bauer, can we eat some of the strawberries? Mr. B says, don't eat them until you wash them. You have never know what is on the strawberry in the field. A lot of these strawberries have sand on them and maybe even some mites. Don't worry, I brought a portable wash station so you can eat them while we are fit in the field. By the way, don't eat all of them or we won't have any for the strawberry sundaes. I hope Mr. Bauer is kidding about mites being on the strawberries. I don't wanna eat mites. By the time I finish filling my one basket, Mr. Bauer's harvesting crew has picked the whole field. I wash a bunch of strawberries and Seth and I eat all the that our stomachs can hold. We both agree that these are the best strawberries we've ever eaten. The rest of the class comes out of the field and we spend the afternoon cleaning and preparing strawberries for the Sundays. The local grocery store arrives with gallons of ice cream. We make a big sign that says strawberry Sunday sale today only. Starting right after school, people begin to show up. It seemed like the whole community comes up for our sale and we make a lot of money. 
The next day in class, Mr. B says, after we took out all the expenses of raising our strawberries and buying materials for the strawberry Sunday sale and setting aside money to buy new plants for next year's fourth grade class project, we have $5,000 remaining. I raise my hand and say, maybe we could use it to put a blacktop path out to the strawberry field. That is an excellent idea, says Mr. B. Seth looks at me and smiles. The class votes to use the money for the path so now every student could get to the field easily as they do their fourth grade project. This has been a very great school project. And that is a very good project by Rick Henningfield with illustrations by Donald Wu. And again, I'd like to thank Feeding Minds Press and the American Farm Bureau Foundation for providing the opportunity to share a very good project with you today. Enjoy.